In this video, I'll introduce you to the workflow for making your own multi-axis additive toolpaths. Okay, let's get going. The new additive toolpaths can be turned on by heading to your preferences, preview features, and checking the additive multi-axis deposition feature flag. Click apply and click OK. When you have a finished design and you wish to manufacture the part using multi-axis deposition toolpaths, the first thing to do is to head over to the manufacture workspace. Often when manufacturing a part with an additive process, it becomes necessary to modify the final design to ensure a successful print. One way to do this is by making use of manufacturing models. Here, you can make manufacturing specific changes to your geometry without affecting your final design, remove features that won't print and add additional stock to surfaces. One important step to remember here is to create separate bodies for the stock material you will be starting with and the feature that you will be depositing. Once you're happy with your manufacturing model, create a new setup, change the operation to additive and select an appropriate machine from the Fusion 360 library. For instance, the Autodesk Generic DED machine. This machine is your gateway to the multi-axis additive workflow and over time we'll be adding more DED and hybrid machines, so remember to keep checking back. From here, set your WCS and select the model you wish to include in the setup. Then click on the stock tab and select the body that represents your starting stock. Click OK and your additive toolbar will now show the options available to you for the multi-axis additive workflow. Click on the multi-axis feature construction icon to launch the toolpath dialog. With the toolpath dialog open, the first thing to do is to select a tool. With this new toolpath strategy, we've created a new tool type called depositing. Today, there are three depositing tools available representing common forms of directed energy deposition technology. The tool is a great place to store process and toolpath presets. Check out the range of sample tools we've created to see how you could manage your process information. The selected tool and preset auto-populates several fields in the toolpath dialog. However, you're still able to change these values if experimenting. Next, navigate to the Geometry tab and select the base you'll be depositing onto. Set the type of base from the Options list Initially, you will be able to deposit onto planar, cylindrical, revolved, and arbitrary surfaces. One important note here, the base is the surface you will be depositing onto, and not the entire body. And finally, select the feature you wish to deposit. In the Heights tab, set the Retract and Clearance Heights. The Passes tab is where you can set the style of the toolpath. Initially, we offer the ability to deposit an infill of parallel passes and a perimeter pass. Remember to use the tooltips to understand how each parameter is controlling the toolpath. The multi-axis tab allows you to apply a global sideways or forwards backwards tilt on the deposition head. Additionally, if you're making use of a perimeter pass, you can independently control the tool axis on this pass. By setting the option to point towards the previous layer, the tool will automatically orientate to the angle of any overhanging wall. This is particularly useful if you have a multi-axis system as it enables you to automatically rotate the part and to remove that overhanging surface. Finally, in the linking tab, set the retraction and linking policies to control the tool motion between deposition passes. Click OK and your toolpath will begin to calculate. Once your toolpath appears, there are a couple of options of how to simulate it. The first is a layer by layer simulation, which will give you a clear view of the passes on each layer of the toolpath. This is a great way to clearly see how each layer is conformal to the base surface that we are depositing onto. The second, simply called simulate, is a simulation which will animate the drawing of your toolpath. Here, you can either visualize the lines of the toolpath or, by turning on the stock option in the dialog, visualize a volumetric representation of the deposition process. It's this deposition stock model that can be passed forwards to any subsequent setup. Once you're happy with your toolpath, 
The final step is to post-process it to generate the machine-specific code. To do this, create a new NC program, select the correct post-processor for your machine, and select the operations you wish to post-process at this time. Fusion 360 post-processors are able to support both additive and subtractive manufacturing processes, so you'll only ever need one post-processor for your hybrid machine. Hit post, and that's it. You're ready to go and manufacture your part. Please remember, we'd love to hear your feedback on these toolpaths. Feedback can be made via the Feedback Hub, which can be accessed within Fusion 360. Thank you for listening, and we hope you enjoy trying out this new functionality.